Oh, perfect time for the word. God bless you. We're getting ready to get into a powerful word. I'm getting ready to do some study. Y'all want to study with me? Come on and let's, uh, let's see. You're watching the word of God through Jesus Christ Street and Irish Telecast. And I'm very grateful that you're here. Okay. Um, you can reach the ministry by calling 475-300-3850. And thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast. And watch this. Don't get caught up in the theatrics, but get caught up in the word. God bless you. My name is Apostle Alan E. Coleman, Jr. The Lord has assigned me as apostle, teacher, and prophet of the word of God through Jesus Christ, street and outreach ministry. Thank you for joining the ministry for this broadcast that God is doing today. I don't know what he's going to do. I don't even know if he's going to have friends with me or not. I don't know, but we're going to find out. You can reach the ministry at 475-300-3850. 24 hours. The ministry's website is also on the screen, so that way you'll know how to join us on the web. Not only that, but periodically there will be the Cash App link on the screen so you can share love offerings to partner with us as God uses us to help others in street and outreach ministry. There's always ongoing fundraisers because God uses the ministry to help others just like he did when he walked this earth. God bless you, and let's get in here and find out what it is the Lord want to say unto us. Come on. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you, thanking you for everything, asking you to forgive us again for all of our sins and shortcomings and our faults and our wrongs. Please just forgive us. Lord, we thank you for this time of fellowship and gathering. Thank you for the purpose in which you have gathered us together. I ask, Lord, that you make me usable and use me. Fill me with the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge. Give me a spiritual understanding of your word. And bless me to be skillful with your word. Answer all of our questions. Raise some questions. You orchestrate. You direct. You be the floor manager. Glory to God. You be the producer. <laughs> Please, Father, allow me to decrease that you may increase. And bless us to have a blessed time in your presence tonight. And again, I thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, ask that you dispense holy angels to encamp themselves around this set. I ask, Lord, that where things get a little rough, Father, that you just show your glory, your strength, your might. All of the noise going on outside, please let none of that interfere with what you're doing in here please again answer some questions Lord because there's some of your children going through some things and they have questions so these questions that have been uh, given unto the ministry tonight to be read off these questions are very important and there's a lot of people that are asking the same thing so please, Father, with the resources you bless me to get, let us just have a blessed time. We love you, and we ask that you help us to show you that. Not only that, but please, Father, answer the prayers that we've been praying. Honor the fasts that we've been going on. Oh, glory. Oh, have mercy, Father. Bless those that you use to partner with the ministry in the street and outreach functions of the ministry to be able to help others 
to be in position to help others as well. I just thank you, Lord. We love you so much. And you do the teaching. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we pray. Amen. You know, I really didn't want to come out of prayer because when the when the Holy Ghost is leading you in prayer, he actually tells you what to say unto him so that you be focused, so that he is right there with you in all things. Now, I want to tell you what this program is about tonight. The Lord has put it in my spirit to share something with social media um, and to share something with the different platforms on social media and on the internet that he uses the ministry to do very often. I mean, this ministry is used by God to do so much stuff. And this right here is one of the features as well. This is called, well, this is called Community Online Question and Answer Bible Study. And actually what the Lord uses the ministry to do in the communities that he blessed the ministry to serve and to help, we're incorporated in nine states. So anywhere the Lord send the ministry, there's always some teaching going on. Always, always, always waiting for and looking for an opportunity to be used by the Holy Ghost to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. And always ready to be used by the Lord to teach <laughs> or even to uproot false doctrine or even to rebuke false doctrine and false teachers. And in order to do something like that, you have to really spend a lot of time studying. So you can't be used by God to establish, now I'm talking to my brother, apostles. You can't be used by God to establish people in the faith if you have no knowledge of all of that other junk that's out there. 27 years ago when the Lord had placed me in this office, he told me to study the different founders of different beliefs and cults and fraternities and sororities and all these different things. Because he said, when I need to bring someone out, I like to be able to use you. And apostles are teachers and preachers. We're not just preachers. And there are some apostles that are preachers and they preach a lot and are not learned in the word enough to be used by God to explain or to teach the word. Whenever you uh, come in contact with an apostle, you are expected to grow because a true apostle will be used by God to help you to grow because we are, not only are we team players, my eyes feel kind of funny, not only are we team players, but our seal, our fruit of the apostleship are the people that the Lord send to the ministry. They get learned. And they get learned in the word of God. The word of God. Definitely the word of God. Anything else is frivolous and garbage. There's no way you can win against the devil with your thoughts, with your opinions, with your own ideology, with your denominational poisons. There's no way you can win against the enemy because the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Not the word of man. No, no. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. And sometimes you just got to cut the devil. <laughs> you got to stick him. <laughs> 
So, the Lord has placed it in my spirit. I mean, I, a lot of you that uh, watch the ministry on the television broadcast that we do in different TV stations, we um, are always teaching deep things, not, not surface things so much, but deep things underneath the surface because it's time to prepare the body of Christ, not just for the return of Christ, but so that they may have a fruitful life while still being here in the earth realm. Oh, glory. There are, I hear you, Lord. There are trials that come against us, that are put in front of us. And if we don't know how to fight our way out of those trials, then that shows we've been wasting time. If the ministry that you go to does not prepare you to be able to fight the trials that you face, then you're wasting time being at that ministry and just rendering your time, energy, substance, and everything else with that ministry. A lot of times the Lord uses this ministry to do uh, fellowship at night or even late night, sometimes after midnight, because at night is when the enemy attacks the people of God a lot of times. Demonology is the field of expertise that the Lord has uh, anointed me in. Not just demonology. He uses the ministry to host a theology class and everything is connected to God. Angelology. Uh, the doctrine of salvation. The doctrine of supplication. The doctrine of prayer, the doctrine of fasting, the doctrine of the blood of Jesus, the doctrine of demons, the doctrine of faith, the doctrine of the fivefold ministry. Now you might say, well, how is it the doctrine of demons? can be connected to God. Well, God made angels. And I saw on social media earlier, someone asked, someone actually did a meme where they posted, if the devil can talk angels out of heaven, then he can talk us into many things. And that was so erroneous because the devil didn't talk nobody out of heaven. What happened is God, when he told Lucifer, you go run the earth like I run heaven, God said, here, take a third of the angels with you. And the angels that God gave to go with him were angels who were not able to not sin. Those are the angels that God gave to go with Lucifer. He didn't get the elect angels. Oh, don't think that. No. He didn't get the elect angels. Because the angels that would not leave their estate stayed in heaven with God and are still in heaven with God. But the angels that fell, that became recognized as demons, which are fallen angels, those, those demons were given unto Satan. Actually, they were given unto Lucifer before he became Satan. God never made the devil, but he created Lucifer. And what happened is, Lucifer, he 
sinned against God, he committed high treason. And when he committed high treason, then he lost his position in heaven. Which, for record's sake, no, it wasn't the choir director. That wasn't his position. His position was that he protected God's holiness. You can say that he was God's right-hand man. He understood God's holiness because he protected it. And God said, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. This is what God said. God said that. So Satan knew when Lucifer became Satan, he knew what it took to grieve God. He knew. And what it took to grieve God was to turn God's people, his creation, mankind, against God. Satan has challenged God to run of the universe and God accepted the challenge. But Satan could not win. He couldn't win. He couldn't win. He can't win. He is a defeated foe. And the thing about it is, is that the Holy Ghost, who is holding the devil back from doing what he's going to do during the tribulation, right now, since the church is in the earth realm, the Holy Ghost is holding Satan back. He's holding him back. Because we're here, the church. We're the salt of the earth. We are the flavor of the earth. People should be able to look at us and they should be able to see how good God is by looking at us, by watching us. Sometimes, unfortunately, you can't tell a saint from an ain't. <laughs> Sometimes you can't. Because years ago, the Lord used a, an older pastor to tell me that there's five things you want to always remember. And I'm not led to get into all five now, but I'll tell you one of them. You, are one, you want to always remember that the temptation to compromise is stronger in the church than in the world. And that's true. The church, not meaning the building, because the building is not a church. It's not the church. Not at all. Not at all. The church are the people of God, the body of Christ. Those that have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That's who the church is. And this walk is a constant walk in order to grow. It's very important. You can't stay still in God and not grow. Or no, let me take that back, scratch that. You can't stay still in God and grow. It doesn't work that way. This walk is all about self-denial. It's not about self, it's about self-denial. 
the Lord desires that he, we serve him. He wants to be our all in all. It doesn't matter whether you're married or whether you're single. The Lord wants to be your all in all. Those that walk with God, those that love God, those that care about God. We can never say we love him and walk according to the ways of the world. God, once you, once you give your life to him, once you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you say he's your Savior, you would definitely have to prove it, and you'll be in position to be challenged to prove it. How? By denying yourself. That means you have to let friends go that are not born again. You, you have to. It, it, it doesn't go any other way. Now, this is question and answer Bible study, and that's what we're going to do. And I, I didn't plan this. I didn't actually plan nothing, but I didn't plan this for sure. And the Lord is uh, leading me this way, and this subject just came up. You can't, you can't be a friend to the world or worldly people and then say that you are following God. It doesn't work that way. The Apostle John was used by the Holy Ghost to write in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. He wrote, Love not the world. This is the King James Version. Love, you know what? Yes, Lord. <laughs> The Lord said, go into the living Bible. And that's what I'm going to do. Because it's going to say it very plain. So that way, no one will walk away saying, I don't understand. And the ministry's phone number is 475-300-3850. It's a 24-hour number. So you can call for prayer. If you was to call right this second, this is June what sixth going on june 7th so right now being that this broadcast is live i'm not going to be able to answer the phone and i don't even have it on me because the phone shouldn't be on me nor should it be heard ringing here on this set okay that's not order that's not even respect to god but if you call and ever if you ever call for prayer for questions about anything you hear this ministry being used by god to teach or you want to vent or you have a bible question or you want prayer 24 hours you can call 475-300-3850 i'm a single man so right now my life and not just right now, but period. I work in ministry full time. And no, I don't get a salary because this is my reasonable service unto the Lord. And I thank God for the people that he used to sow into the ministry because your support accomplishes a lot of things for the ministry so that God can use the ministry to do some things. Even the studio equipment that the ministry has and different things. Uh, the Lord has used people to be a blessing and that's good. That's good. This is not one of the ministries where you get beat up and told the more you give, the more you'll be blessed. No, don't do that. If you're watching by social media, in the description, there is, uh, if you're watching, there, in the description, there is, uh, the Cash App link and so forth. And if you're watching by television, because I'm recording for television also, filming for television. So I got the Chromebook here and the TV camera there. So I didn't forget about you guys that are watching by television. I didn't forget about you. God bless you also. But um, the Cash App link is on the TV screen. And for those of you watching by 
StreamYard or YouTube or Facebook, the Cash App link is in the description. Okay? Brother John, the apostle, wrote in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15, the Lord told him to write this. Stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love these things, you show that you do not really love God. For all these worldly things, these evil desires, the craze for sex, the ambition to buy everything that appeals to you, and the pride that comes from wealth and importance, these are not from God. They are from this evil world itself. And this world is fading away. And these evil, forbidden things will go with it. But whoever keeps doing the will of God will live forever. It's called eternal life. In the King James, it says it this way. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Now there have been people that say that they were following God and they ended up leaving God. It says in verse 18, Brother John wrote, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Meaning, when they left the faith, that showed they wasn't, they wasn't walking with God anyway. Because what could, oh glory, what could God do so bad that would make you want to leave him? Those that know him would say nothing, nothing. So it's very important to be prepared to go back with Jesus when he comes. It's very important. And so what the Lord has put it in my spirit to do is to let him use the ministry to do what we do anyway, because usually we use police substations or community substations, or we use different places or even people's homes, the ministry does, to be used by God to teach and do Bible study and so forth. And since this demon of coronavirus has been running around, the Lord has told me, no, put that down for a minute. And that's what I've done. So a lot of the teaching is being done by television or by telephone or by internet. So you, you have to be wise. And it's not that I'm scared because I'm not scared. I don't wear a mask at all. It's just that I know that the coronavirus is a demon. He is a spirit that affects and infects people. And if you don't know how to fight the enemy when it comes to spiritual warfare, then you're in trouble. That's the purpose of ministry and a minister being used by God. Let me go back into the Living Bible, and then we're going to get into some questions that people have sent. 2 Corinthians is what I'm going to read out of the Living Bible. And I'm going to read it out of here so that it's plain as day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. And then I'll read it out of the Living, out of the King James. 
for those that love the style of the King James writing like I do too. <laughs> Second Corinthians 4 verse 1 says, It is God himself in his mercy who has given us this wonderful work of telling his good news to others. And so we never give up. We do not try to trick people into believing. We are not interested in fooling anyone. We never try to get anyone to believe that the Bible teaches what it doesn't. All such shameful methods we forego. We stand in the presence of God as we speak. And so we tell the truth as all who know us will agree. If the good news we preach is hidden to anyone, it is hidden from the one who is on the road to eternal death. Satan, who is the god of this evil world, has made him blind, unable to see the glorious light of the gospel that is shining upon him, or to understand the amazing message we preach about the glory of Christ, who is God. Now I'm going to read that out of the King James Version, and then we're going to get into answering these questions. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, starting at verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Verse 5, for we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants. <laughs> for Jesus' sake. Now I'm led to read one more thing. I said that, but I hear the Holy Ghost say, no, throw this out there too. And I am. First uh, Timothy, praise the Lord. And I believe it's, I believe it's chapter 6. Let's see. There's chapter 6, Christ, Lord of Lords. Or is it 5? Let's see. Oh, here it is. Verse 5 of 1 Timothy chapter 6. I'm going to go back to verse 3 to walk up to verse 6, all right? Walk with me. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 3 says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and stripes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such withdraw thyself. And then it just says in verse 6, but godliness with contentment is great gain. So those ministers that tell you well, the more you give, the more you'll be blessed, and God wants you to do this and do that. Listen, 
If you share any of your resources, share it because God put it in your spirit to. Not because you've been coerced or bamboozled or beat up or strong on. Those last three stimulus checks, when they came out, believe this, there was a lot of ministers, the wrong ones, who were waiting for them to come out too. And all of a sudden, revivals popped up on Zoom. <laughs> all of a sudden, workshops popped up with a fee. I understand doing a fundraiser for the ministry to do ministry work. But the Lord would not have ministers to use the people as pray. P-R-E-Y. It's not right. It's not right at all. It's not right. Right now, the Lord should be using us ministers. Oh, glory to tell people how to go through what they're going through and how to make it through what they're going through. That's what we should be doing. So that's what Bible study is for. Bible study is not preaching to you or doing a Sunday service during what you call Bible study, that's, that's not Bible study. Bible study is question and answer. See, because the ministries that the Lord do use on Sunday, people might have questions about what you say God used you to teach or preach. And if that be the case, the, the, the believers, the brethren should have the opportunity to ask you brother or sister what did that mean that the Lord used you to say what the, the lesson you was teaching on Sunday or preaching on Sunday or hollering about on Sunday what did it mean what were you saying What I, I don't understand I'm 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 in a I'm caught up on some things. So question and answer Bible study is very important. Now, I'm going to say, as the Lord lead me, that if you want to send in questions, <laughs> and it don't matter how hard you think the questions are, or if you don't think they make sense, or if you think the questions are silly, it, it doesn't matter. If you have a question and you want it read and explained on this broadcast, you can either write the ministry at apostolos, A-P-O-S-T-O-L-O-S, A-E-C, at gmail.com, right there, right there. Or for those that know how to reach me on Facebook, Apostle Coleman, that's the account associated with this work right here. Apostle Coleman. It'll be a picture of me. Probably, I think it's a, a, actually a picture of the ministry seal. I don't know. But it's a look at my face. Mm. I took a shower before it being used by God to minister tonight, so my eyes are still uh, being affected by the water. So uh, look at my face, and then if you go on Facebook right now, if you're by your computer and type in Apostle Coleman, then you'll see me. Then you can send your questions right through there. Or again, you can send it through the ministry's email, Apostolos, A-P-O-S-T-O-L-O-S, -O -O that's Apostle in the Greek. A-P-O-S-T-O-L-O-S-A-E-C at gmail.com and you can ask any question or questions that you want and put in the subject box questions for online 
uh, for community online question and answer Bible study. Or just put uh, online Bible study, all right? Then that way I'll know is for this program. And then uh, if you don't want, I, I need you to, you know, put your, your name and everything in there and even your email, which is going to show up anyway. But if you don't want your name read out over the air, just say, please list me as anonymous. And I'll do that, okay? There's a couple of people here who have uh, listed the, their names as anonymous. And even though I know their uh, actual name, I'm not going to read it because they asked me not to. But then there's some people that have left their initial or I think their name, I'm not sure, I'll find out in a minute. Uh, for those that have done that, I will, you know, say your name. Okay? And also you can leave prayer requests so the Lord can use me to pray online specifically for you or for whoever you want the ministry to pray for. Okay? That's right. 475-300-3850 is a 24-hour prayer line as well. Okay? Now, let's get into some questions. I'm going to just mix them up so that way they can just be asked. Now, here's a question from Anonymous. It says, is Satan omnipresent? I, that means that's supposed to be omni. Omnipresent. Now, that's a good question. That's a very good question. And the reason it's a good question, because when it comes to the enemy, a lot of people don't know about him. And that's why sometimes it's hard to fight him. Because if you don't know about him, then how are you going to fight him? So there is no question that man can have that the answer is not in the Word of God. It's always in the Word of God. The answers are, the Bible is, and see a lot of, for the people who say, well, that book was written by a white man. No, and, and this is white. I don't think I've seen any, well, I've seen people that were very light-skinned, but never this complexion. This is white. Just like um, this is black. I've never seen anyone this complexion. I've seen people very dark, but not this right here. This. I'm not saying there isn't any. It may be somewhere, someone somewhere. I don't know. But most of us that are of color are brown. Okay? So, um, but there's people who say that God didn't write the Bible. That man wrote it. And uh, there's people who even try to bamboozle people and get them to follow other, follow other religions or other beliefs because they say Christianity is not the way and nowhere in the Bible does it say that people are called Christians, and, and, which is wrong because it says it in the book of Acts. So that's, that's very wrong. But God wrote this book. This book... The Bible was written by the Holy Ghost, and he's God. But let's, let's answer this question. Is Satan omnipresent? Well, in the book of Job, chapter 1, there was a day, verse 6, when the angels presented themselves before God like they always do. It says in the King James, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And then verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, 
that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. God said, have you considered my servant Job? Have you noticed him? Have you focused on him at all? Now, when Satan said that he was walking up and down in the earth and, and patrolling it, he said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. That's what he said. He was looking for something to do. Looking for something to do. And God right here suggested to him, <clears throat> Job. And so the devil didn't know. No, he's he's not. I'm, he's not omnipresent. Omnipresent, well, the word omni means all, and present means here, you know, ev uh, um, visible. Omnipresent means to be all present, everywhere. And Satan is not omnipresent. He can't be everywhere at one time. The only one that can do that is God. <laughs> As a matter of fact, in John chapter 3, when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, let's notice what Jesus said in John chapter 3, verse 13. And when he said this, he was talking about himself. Here's what he said. He said, And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, which is him, because remember he's right, he's on the earth while he's saying this, talking to Nicodemus. He said, No man hath went up to heaven or ascended to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So he's explaining right here that he's omnipresent. Now, Satan is not. Satan cannot be down the street, around the corner, and, and up the block at the very same time. He can't do that. He's a very limited foe of God. He's very limited. He's not omnipotent, meaning almighty. He's not omnipresent, which means everywhere. And he's not omniscient, which means all-knowing. He's not that. As a matter of fact, when the enemy wants to attack us, he challenges us to see what we know. And if we don't know certain things, he, oh glory, he beats us up in that area. Good example in the book of Genesis. Let's notice chapter 2 and here's what scripture says scripture says in verse chapter 2 that's 2 Address it and to keep it. Yep. Chapter 2 of Genesis, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Dress it means decorate it. Keep it means to guard it. Verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Now this is what God told him. This came straight from the mouth of God right to the ears of Adam. Of every tree in the garden, thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt, meaning you will, surely die. This is what God said. Of every tree in the garden, you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, 
thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, in Genesis chapter 3, when the devil used the body of a serpent, and he wasn't slithering then, he used the body of a serpent and he walked up to Eve. And you wonder, well, what do you mean he walked up? Where does it say that? Well, some things in Scripture are revelatorily given. Some things. And when reading it, for instance, it doesn't say, and God made Adam before Eve. It doesn't say that. But we are able to see that as we continue to read. Now, when God handed down the fivefold curse after the fall, one of them was he cursed the serpent and told him, from now on, you shall crawl on your belly and eat dust. So that tells us that before that, before the judgment was handed down, he wasn't crawling on his belly. And if you look at the skeleton of a snake, you will see little nubs that would indicate that there, in the skeletal part of the serpent, there was, there were leg bones. But you have to research that. You have to look at uh, the serpent's anatomy. Get a book on animals, and, and, and it's not about evolution because no, that's that Darwinism is not biblical. It's actually against scripture. The world is, the earth is not millions or billions of years old. It's only a little less than 10,000 years old. And that comes from studying. Just like there's a lot of people that say people of color are Shemites or Semites. No, no. We're Hamites. But that takes studying too. Because Ham was the founder of Africa. Noah's son Ham. Now, Genesis chapter 3, verse 1 says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Now the devil used the body of a serpent. Why? Well, number one, he needed to do a slick move here. And the way to do this slick move is to use a slick vessel. But the other reason was because when God told Adam to dress the garden, which means decorate it, and keep it, which means to protect it, that means protect it from anything that would come in the garden that shouldn't be there. Now, if Satan had to came in the garden as Satan, Adam would have recognized him and cast him out. So what he did, like he always do, oh coward, is he used the body of another vessel that didn't know or, or had no authority to say no. A serpent couldn't say nothing. Hmm. So he got in his body and he used it to walk up to Eve. Mind you, Adam was there with her all the time. It's not like he was somewhere else in the garden. No, he was with his wife. And he was wrong for letting this serpent come up and challenge his wife. He was wrong for that. So, brothers, if you're blessed to be married and God has given you a flower, please protect her. God, please protect her. Protect her. I tell you, that's, that was a powerful show. That was really, really, really a powerful show. Join us the next time when the Lord leads us to go back in the scripture with some more information. Maybe it'll be with one of my friends. Maybe it'll be just me. I don't know. Either way, the Lord will be orchestrating the lesson. God bless you.
and take care. <laughs> Till the next time. In Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for all that I have in you. And all that you are in my life. For all that you've done for thy servant. Lord, you're just so wonderful. You're just so wonderful. I can't think of how else my life would be without you. As long as I have Jesus, I have a satisfied mind. This is my prayer. Sometimes I don't have. What did you say you had?